take it away. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Can everybody hear me quite well? Good afternoon. Thanks for being here and joining me in my talk. So I'm not sure if everybody joined the talk from Quinn uh, earlier today. Um, what I got out of that was at least a message that security is, well, pretty much broken in a lot of cases. Uh, she focused on the networking part, the internet. I will be talking today about SAP, SAP security, um, used in many large companies. And um, it's a very wide topic. So unfortunately, I cannot cover all in just a couple of minutes. So I will zoom in on uh, flaw vulnerabilities that we still see a lot and which expose quite dangerous uh, information. Well, at least every Fortune 2000 company uses SAP and also below the Fortune 2000, a lot of SAP, uh, SAP also has a lot of customers. So this is, uh, many, many businesses run on these systems. Um, can I see some hands? Is, 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 the, is everybody a bit familiar with SAP? Uh, can, can you share your hand if you know about SAP? Not too many hands. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to that later. I'll give you a brief introduction. First, who am I? I'm Joris van der Vis. I'm from the Netherlands. I have a background of around 20 years in SAP, did programming, SAP basis consultancy, which technically means I do a lot of installations and security related work. Next to that, I also do quite some SAP security research. And in the past couple of years, I discovered like 60 or 70 vulnerabilities in SAP systems. Um, Next to that, I'm also the father of a daughter who is turning seven today. So if you're looking, baby, I guess I'm on YouTube a little bit later. Happy birthday. Thanks, Cooper, for recording the sessions. I'm working for ERPSEC. We're based in the Netherlands, and we're just a small company with a couple of guys specialized in SAP security. Like I said, we do SAP security research. And next to that, we do a lot of SAP security assessments for customers. And um, last year, we also uh, brought our own SAP security solution to the market. So back to SAP. Uh, for the people who are not familiar with SAP, SAP is, like I said, running um, most of the corporate world. Um, it's big, it's huge, it's storing all the uh, business critical data. Um, they have a lot of industry-specific solutions for oil running companies, for financial businesses, for logistic corporations, for governments. And um, as mentioned, and that's the bottom line, it's an interesting target because companies, organizations, large organizations, they definitely rely on this software. If those systems go down, then, um, well, shipments cannot be sent to customers or um, transactions will not uh, cannot be processed whole factories might stop running um, this is definitely uh, business critical and um, that's also um, one of the reasons why SAP security is still uh, well underdeveloped if I can say it like that the thing is that because these systems are so business critical Many customers don't tend to touch it. They're afraid. Um, patching means downtime. Downtime means business downtime, downtime most often. And companies don't like that. The good thing is that um, we see more and more awareness at customers because this was a topic which was for a long time really neglected. Companies spent a lot of money on their infrastructure, on their intrusion detection systems, uh, endpoint security, whatever. But SAP security was for a long time really uh, 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 something that, that was not really looked after. We see changes. We see more and more customers actively, uh, you know, at least they are aware that they have to do something. The step from their awareness to really fixing stuff is quite, uh, is, is more, uh, is, is little. 
the good thing is that SAP as a as a company itself over the past couple of years did a lot to improve security. Um, after I think 10 years or even longer after Microsoft published their first baseline document, now SAP also has one. They're, they used to be quite a bit behind other big large software vendors, um, but they, they, they caught up. They did quite a good action there and the information is there, patches are there, security guides are there, there's a baseline document, but now it's really up to customers to step into uh, and to fix things. Uh, maybe good to mention, um, we do a lot of SAP security assessments at uh, large SAP running companies and even though it might sound funny or stupid, in every assessment that we did, we found at least one default SAP account, which can mean a complete compromise of your SAP system. So that will be the topic of today. When doing these SAP security assessments, there are two quite big attack factors uh, that can easily give you access to business critical SAP systems. Uh, one of those is the RFC gateway, which is a middleware component that every SAP system has to communicate with other SAP systems. It should be protected by an access control file. If that file is not in place, then you can easily get remote code execution on SAP system via the network. The only thing needed is to have access to port 33XX, where XX is the number of this specific SAP system. Still, you see this a lot within companies. If, if, if one of those systems is not properly protected in your entire landscape, um, if this RFC is unprotected, it can give you access to the whole SAP landscape. So that's an easy way in. Another easy way in is obviously via default accounts. And it's sad that I have to say it, but like I said, we still find them on a regular basis. So I could be talking here about buffer overflows or some really deep technical cool ways to exploit SAP systems. They do exist. Um, however, it starts with the basics. And many SAP customers still don't have the basics fixed. Okay, this, this, is a, this is a list of publicly known SAP default accounts so far. Nothing secret about this, you can find it on the internet rather easily. Um, these are known for quite some time. As you can see, for example, the password of SAP star user is 06071992, which is a date. It's the date that SAP released their R3 system. And it was released on that particular date, back in 1992. As from that date, this user is in many systems. Uh, you can still find it. It's still quite often find, found by us. Um, but, okay, these are the publicly known SAP default accounts. What we have discovered uh, some time ago is that there is a whole range of other SAP default accounts which can give you sometimes very high privileged access to SAP systems. Um, this is the list. Um, these are also public now, but the funny thing is, I will mention it later, is it was already public for quite some time because it's mentioned by SAP in their documentation. Um, some of these users are created in the so-called SAP Solution Manager, which is a central uh, system to do technical monitoring and stuff like that. But uh, some of these users are also created in all connected satellite systems, as we call them. Uh, the Solution Manager is like a central spider in the web, and it is connected to all the other SAP systems in the landscape. So if you can get access to the SAP Solution Manager, most often it means that you have access to the whole landscape. So many customers have asked us, okay, are those users in my system? Because um, we want to know if they are there, how can we figure that out? Um, the thing is, if you run this SAP Solution Manager system 
for over five years, then chances are quite big that those systems are in your, uh, those users are in your system. Um, because um, most customers use the SAP Solution Manager because it is um, obligatory from SAP itself, because the only way to retrieve patches and to download software is to do that via this SAP Solution Manager. So back, at least back in 2007, SAP urged customers to really start using this system. And as from them, from then on, customers really did. But already quite before that time, many customers uh, were working with the SAP Solution Manager. If you set this up, this system more than five years ago, then the wizard that introduced these accounts with default passwords was already there. So most customers do have these accounts, not all of them, but many do. And it's depending on the scenarios that you use, if you have just a couple or way more of these accounts in your SAP system. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, these default accounts were introduced via a wizard. If you installed the SAP Solution Manager, you had to run like a, a post installation wizard. And the post installation wizard was creating these users with a default password. Nobody knew that. At least customers did not, because these users and passwords were used in, in, in like all kind of background processes. And as long as these processes were running, everything was fine, right? So actually, this is the part of the of the of a code in a specific clause in the SAP Solution Manager where this password is coming from. As you can see there, it's in it one two three four. This particular clause is still in the most current version of SAP Solution Managers. The thing is, it's not being used anymore. So it can be scrapped. But in the past, these constants were used to create these users. Now a little bit more on why these users got created in the first place. Um, like I mentioned, the SAP Solution Manager is like a technical system that is used for, uh, for example, technical monitoring, but you can use it for way more. You can use it to do uh, checks on custom code. You can use the SAP Solution Manager, for example, to do change management, where you can have a workflow that is automating changes in your landscape and stuff like that. Depending on all those scenarios that you activate, you will have one or more of these particular users in your SAP system. But there is one basic scenario that every customer needs to run, and that already introduced quite a couple of SAP default accounts with this default password of init1234. So like I mentioned, most of these users get created in the SAP Solution Manager, but there are others that are in uh, that, that get created all throughout your landscape, uh, which is bad because that means one of these users is most often enough to compromise an SAP system. If they are there all throughout your landscape, then it's quite hard to stop the leaking. As mentioned, this SAP Solution Manager, um, it's in the heart of your SAP landscape. And all other SAP systems throughout your entire SAP landscape are connected to, to this central SAP Solution Manager. Um, that makes it an interesting target because of these connections, if you can attack and get access to this SAP Solution Manager, you have basically access to the whole landscape. From this SAP Solution Manager, you can jump to the other SAP systems. So it should be it should be quite hardened and protected. Um, I don't see that too often in real life because the SAP Solution Manager is like it's not a business system. It's a bus it, it, most often it's a system for the techies. They do their technical monitoring there, and. Um, it's it's most often not 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 particularly hardened. Um, it's a, it's it's a dangerous thing. We will I will show you that later on. Yeah, how bad is this? Like I mentioned, the SAP Solution Manager is 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 definitely the most interesting target in your landscape. Um, and if these users that I mentioned before exist with a default password, it's quite easy to get access. I'll show you that later on. Um, 
um, the, and what makes it more complicated is that um, most SAP business systems are uh, managed by SAP authorization consultants. They create users, they create passwords, they make sure there are no default accounts in those systems. But they do that most often for the business systems. As mentioned, this SAP solution manager is often seen as a technical system. So the, the normal authorization administration people are not looking at that system. So it's quite, quite ignored. Um, in the next couple of minutes, I will show you some live demos to, to show you how you can exploit these users. They don't all have uh, big, uh, large authorizations. Some of them have a limited set of authorizations, but nevertheless, it's important. Um, some of the demos will use other vulnerabilities we discovered in SAP systems to, to make an exploitation uh, successful. What I want to stress here is that it's always good to pop shells on SAP systems. And from a technical perspective or a pen test perspective, that's rather cool. Um, however, keep in mind, these are business critical systems. So having a shell, having root access or, you know, a shell to an SAP system always means a complete business compromise. From there, you can, if you know how you can manipulate business transactions, you can um, get really sensitive data, encrypted credit card data, you can steal intellectual property, uh, you can steal recipes, for example, from, you know, companies like Heineken or Pepsi or Coca Cola. They store like the, the recipes of their secret magic formula in SAP systems. So, Popping shells on such systems is definitely, definitely something not good. So, what I will show you first, and maybe I should go back one more time to the slide because what you see here if you look at the type of those systems you will see that many of them are of the type system but some of them are dialogue type users so what does that mean dialogue users can be used to interactively log on to the SAP system via the SAP GUI, which is a FAT client. Um, system users cannot be used for that. Not interactively, but you can find other ways to get access to SAP systems. I will show that later on. First of all, let's have a look at this SAP support user, which is of the type dialog. I have an SAP system running here locally on my laptop. I hope it won't crash because it's consuming quite some resources. So let's first uh, show you what might happen if this SAP support user is in your SAP solution manager. I'm logging on with the init1234 password. If it's initial, it's forcing you to change it immediately. That's not a problem. So, this already means we are in the SAP system, which is not good, definitely not good. However, this system or this user has a quite limited role. So, if I want to go, for example, to transaction SM49, which is a transaction where you can execute operating system commands and do privilege escalation and stuff like that, that's not going to work because it shows at the bottom of the screen you are not authorized to use transaction SM49. And quite a couple of other transactions are also not working. For example, transaction SU01, which you can use to give yourself more authorizations, is not working as well. However, we discovered a vulnerability in the past. 
and I will show you how that works because transaction SA38 works for the people that are quite into SAP systems. They know you can use that to execute ABAP programs. And for example, there is a program called like this that you can execute. And what it does, it allows you to execute operating system commands with only a subset of predefined whitelisted operating system commands. For example, the env command, if I execute this, it will give you a list of the environment variables, which is, well, nice from a attacker perspective. You could say, okay, I can use this for maybe gathering some more information for further attacks. But this is not all you can do. What we discovered is that it does not only allow you to execute these predefined uh, commands, but you can also inject here in the param field your own ones. So if I say, for example, here, who am I? Then what will happen is that it executes that command instead of the predefined one. This is patched already quite some time ago. Um, but this gets more interesting because it means you have like a shell within the SAP GUI and you can use it to execute whatever you want uh, if you want to have the IP configuration. You will have it. And this this is this is good from an attacker's perspective um, because what this means, it means if you can execute operating system commands on an SAP system, you have an implicit trust relation with the database. So from here, you can do anything you want in the database, get all data, insert new records, update existing ones. I will show you that in another demo. But this is to show you what you can do with this SAP support user, the dialogue one. So in a second demo, we will have a look at another user, which is the SMD agent underscore SID user. And that one gets created as a system user. That means that you cannot use the SAP GUI to log on to a system, but there are other ways around. Um, what you can do, you can use the RFC SDK, which is a software development kit, to execute RFC calls to an SAP system. It's like a, a system call. It's not interactive via the GUI, but it's connecting to the SAP system anyway. Uh, what I did, I wrote a Python script that is using this RFC SDK, um, what it will do, and for the people that are quite familiar with SAP systems, uh, this might sound familiar, for others I'll try to explain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call a particular function module. A function module in SAP is like an API that you can call, you can put something in it, and it will give you something back. And those function modules can be either local or remote enabled. The local ones, you cannot call directly via an RFC call. Um, and the one that we are going to execute, this SDF RBE native SQL select, is a local one, which sucks, because we cannot call it remotely. However, we figure out there is a way, because SAP was offering another function module which is remote enabled and which can act as a proxy to call this local one. So what this Python script does, it's connecting, in this case with the SMD agent user, with the default password init 1234. It will use this remote enabled function module to call a local one and this local one allows me to do a select statement on the USRO2 table. And this gets interesting because the USRO2 table contains all password hashes of SAP systems. In an, well, in a hashed way, but we'll get back to that later. 
So if I execute this Python script, all you need to know is the host, the system number, the client, the user, and a password. Well, this is nothing fancy. Just by nmap kind of scanning, you can get all this information. If I execute that, what it gives me back in a rather unstructured way is usernames, password hashes. User, password hash. These are um, rather old password hashes. They are hashed in a format which is MD5 kind of uh, hashing. Um, and it can be brute forced really relatively easy with tools like Hashcat. You might know Hashcat, open source, freely available. So just to give you a short demo of what it looks like, all these password hashes that you see here, I put them in a text file like this, username dollar and then the password hash. So if you feed that to Hashcat, and this is just on a quite simple GPU that's in my laptop, already after quite some time, here you will see that it already brute forced one of those users. If you just would let this run for another couple of 20, 24 hours, it will probably brute force them all. So again, via another user, combined with a couple of other vulnerabilities, which are patched already by SAP, but still we find them in SAP systems, you can retrieve password hashes, brute force them, and log on with any user you want. All right, next to another example. Again, a user with this default password, init 1234, and this is a user which gets created with quite a lot of authorizations. It's called the Solman batch user, which is used in the background to run batch jobs in SAP. And since this user has quite a lot of authorizations, you can use it to call a specific function module, which is there to actually execute operating system commands. So this is not a function module that has a vulnerability. This just works as designed. And it just happens to be that this Solman batch user has enough rights to execute that. So what we will do, I will abuse this specific user to directly in the database create an SAP user, which is rather nice because normally if you create SAP users in the application, it gets locked, and probably if you create your own user, uh, it will trigger some notification and somebody might start asking questions. Hey, why did you create that user? But we are not going to do it in the application itself. Since we do it directly in the database, the application will not even know that you create this SAP user. So for that purpose, I wrote another Python script as you see here, we will use the Solman batch user with init1234 password, the default one. And what we'll do here, we'll execute this function module three times. We'll call an operating system tool command to execute SQL, native SQL. And because I mentioned this before, because SAP uh, operating system users have an implicit trust relation, you can directly access the database, which is normally because the application also needs to write and retrieve stuff from the database. So you don't need to specify a database password, you can just say minus U default, and then we're going to update into this USRO2 table that we saw before that contains the password hashes. I will make a user there go in with this hash. Now, the funny thing of these hashes is there's no salt in it, in this old backwards compatible password hash. So this one will work in any SAP system. I just created an SAP user in my own system. I know the password, obviously, so I can um, import this hash that I know the password of, and we can log on in the system later on. 
Um, we'll do another nice trick um, for the people that are familiar with SAP user administration. You can um, create reference users. So-called reference users are a user that is uh, taking over the authorizations of another user. So what I will do, I'll just say our newly created user go in, um, make it a reference user for DDIC. And DDIC is a hard-coded kernel user in SAP systems that has the role SAP all, which basically means root, god mode, whatever you want to call it. So I'll just take that over and attach that to my own created user. If I execute that Python script, again, I have to provide the host name, system number, client, and in this case, we'll use this Solomon batch user with the init1234 default password. And what you'll see here is that a couple of rows are updated in the database. So if everything worked, we can log on with our go in and in you go is the password that was uh, the password hash that I inserted so we're in and what I will show you if we go to this go in user that I just created and have a look at it then you'll see two things it has reference user ddig no other roles assigned but it doesn't matter, it takes over SAP all from this account. And what you also notice is that the last changed field is completely blank because it's not created via the application, but directly in the database. So not many people will figure out what happened to this user. Another last demo I want to show you is um, uh, using Metasploit. Um, maybe some of you are doing pen tests. If you ever come across an SAP system and you figure out some SAP users, you might wonder what to do with it. You might not be familiar with the GUI and SAP specific stuff. So there are a couple of Metasploit modules you can use to just get your shell in Metasploit. Just a quick demo. In this case, we'll use the SOAP RFC command execute module. Um, I already pre-filled it. This is the IP address of the target. This is my own. And I want a command shell. And again, we'll use these default credentials. Solman batch. Password init 1234. Let's just run the module. No session. That's too bad. Let's give it another try. Okay. So for the demo, gods were fine with me, but I have a backup for this kind of thing. As it's the last demo, I'll go back to my PowerPoint anyway. So let me just quickly show it via a video. The same screen that you just saw is here. Again, using this Solomon Batch user. It might be hard to read, but it's the same screen as we saw before. And basically what it does is like a reverse shell and giving you back um, a shell that you can further use in your pen test or whatever. Well, for the ones familiar with Metasploit, you know what this means. In this case, I'm just doing I have config commands, but who am I? But also from this command line, you can abuse this trust relation with the database. I'm showing that here. It might be hard to read, but those were the password hashes you saw there throw them in hashcat and you win. So quick some notes how we discovered this. Um, 
we use for quite some time uh, open source tool Solar uh, to index ABAP code. Most SAP systems are ABAP, ABAP stacks, so-called ABAP systems, the programming language of SAP itself, and especially really large ECC systems, enterprise core systems, they might contain up to 300 million lines of code. You don't want to go through that. So we used uh, some tooling from Martin Soronio, a guy from South Africa, I think, who, who wrote like an interface for Solar, so you could index all ABAP code. And we're just uh, searching through the source code, Google style, you just search for specific strings. I was searching for init one, two, three, and then I found in it one, two, three, four, and we thought, hey, wow, where does that come from? And then when we Googled actually that particular password string that we found, we figured out there was SAP documentation already from 2010 mentioning these users and passwords. Also, there is an SAP note. I'm not sure if you can read it, but there is SAP documentation way more than this that makes mention of this default password. So we took the rather long way to index all source code and figure out this password while we could just have read the fucking manual. But nevertheless, we got it. So how to protect yourself? There's quite some measures. Um, first of all, if you want to figure out if those users are in your system with a default password, we created some tooling. You can download it from our website, erpsec.com. Um, it will show you uh, if it's there. Apart from that, there's also uh, PySAP, which is a tool from Martin Gascio. He's a guy from Core Security, and he made uh, PySAP, which is a Python uh, yeah, framework to do a lot of SAP assessments. It's open source, so if you ever come across an SAP system during pen test, make sure to check it out. I will not go through this slide because there's a lot of information on it, but basically how to protect yourself is change the default password. It's as simple as that. Um, there's a lot of so-called SAP security notes. You can look them up and download them later and check. There's a lot of information there how to help you changing this password. It might be a bit complicated sometimes because it might break business stuff. That's also why customers don't tend to do a lot of security, SAP security related patching because it might break business and business is not happy. Um, and you could also, if you, those, if you don't need those users from a business perspective, you might create them as honey tokens, for example. So you can set it up to figure out if somebody's actively trying to attack your systems. Yeah, these are all references. Uh, the, the presentation will be available later. You can look that up. Also, the links to the free tooling and the Metasploit modules will be there. This is basically the stories. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, either right now or after this talk. Thanks. Hello, thank you for this presentation. I would like to come back for the first demonstration where you call some ABAP program, and I would like to know which kind of program you can abuse with, a, because it's really quickly and... You mean a Python script? No, 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 the first demo when you uh, exploit SA38, and then you this. you call uh, a program ah, sorry, uh, let with me. end uh, of runman variables, yes? This is what you mean, probably. Yeah, but the name of this uh, ABAP program? This is the SAP GUI. Ah, uh, sorry. The first? This, the particular name of the ABAP program, yes, let me show you. And here we go. It's this one. Yes, RSSA. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's, it's being patched already for some time. As but usual, it's SAP, so before it's patched, we can play again. Yes, and still many customers are rather late with patching. Thanks. Hi. 
Uh, thank you for this uh, presentation. So I have just a tiny question about the uh, the Python program. Yes. So I guess that behind it calls some some internal SDK of SAP. Yes. Is this SDK is freely available, or uh, when when we download the Python library, we have also this SDK, or we have yes. to go? Yes. You need the SDK. Yeah. Yes, it's free. Free. But you need to be an SAP customer to be able to download it, or you have to know somebody who can download it for you because it's behind the. Uh, you have to use an SAP account that you only have as an SAP customer to be able to download the RFC SDK. But you might know maybe some people that might provide it to you. Yeah. Okay. There's like 300,000 customers in the world, so I guess there will be maybe one helping you out. Thank you. You'll figure it out. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Any more questions? No more? Okay. Well, thanks very much, Joris. Thank you. Thanks.